doing the commercial and the guy's running out of the building just covered in the red nipple thing. <laughs> <laughs> Volvo, buy our cars. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin, that's Jordan Swang, that is one Pedro Mateus, and that's you at home watching us live, helping us form cocaine Voltron. You know him, you love him. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here. Once again, we reconvene for this unholy um, amalgam of episode 551 in which we will discuss... Stuff. Jesus. Things. Doom things. Yes. <laughs> Linux gaming thingies. <laughs> Got a couple of things. Um, here's a little not humble brag. We, were, we uh, play Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays, but on Fridays in the after shows and we play the uh, new Trackmania. We do the cup of the um, evening. And uh, Linux Gamecast represent uh, number seven, number ten. Last Getting night. Getting up there. <laughs> In the Defeated world. by Super Squirrel. Dude, we got uh, Johnny Behoff. Threw <laughs> down, man. He threw down. and uh, That's always a good time. Come hang out with us. So we'll be back Tuesday with uh, Trackmania Squared if you want to do that. And I'll be live tomorrow. As is tradition, I think somewhere like around 11 o'clock. If you want to watch me edit the super exciting, super non-sexy part of making a podcast. But if you've got your Linux questions, throw them in. That's the right time to do it. And Wednesday... Since scale is still going on, if you tuned in last Wednesday, we did a stealth build inside of a webcam. We, in, we installed RetroPie on a um, Raspberry Pi HQ, Raspberry Pi Zero with an HQ uh, webcam attached to it because I couldn't get the webcam software to install and work correctly. So we ended up just installing RetroPie on it. <laughs> oh, man, I, I wonder if you could like set up the camera to like read in the shit from the power glove so you can get like native power glove support on the Raspberry Pi. Oh, man, see, I, no, I, I want like a camera for each finger man like rings yeah. i, I, I want to be like <laughs> thanos like the, like the like the mandarin yeah oh the mandarin yeah, yeah. the cameron and that one work. so this wednesday what i'm going to be doing is uh doing fedora silver blue we're going to be putting that on putting steam on it and uh installing xfce yeah i i looked into that it's like oh i guess kino it has that you gotta like rebase Mm -hmm. I, it's really cool that you can do that shit with our with like OS tree in general. Like I was just like making the funny and like I was like, oh, y'all bitches want to talk some shit about it. Let's see if we can fucking make it happen. Then all right, I, I, I'm sure you'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, just uh, when the system updates, you're back to new. <laughs> no, 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 not the, at all, Pedro. You can shut like, your like, mouth and read the yeah. instructions. The, there's right. a there's a there's a flat packed xfce I, yeah when when ben mentioned that i'm like really i looked into it and i'm like huh yeah there's like two or three projects that actually like implement that via flat pack um yeah o os tree man it's crazy coming right. out with the wednesday uh, we're gonna learn all about silver blue i'm not gonna prepare for it we're gonna drop in a fresh nvme drive into rectangle and just get to business and see see how it works see how it installs and see what it is to get steam up and running on it so it should be a good time how about you jordan Ah, it's been a very busy week. I'm, I'm still the only one in my department. I did get a new laptop. I installed Debian 11 on it, and honestly, it is a massive improvement over Mac OS. I will, I will take that bargain any day of the fucking week. It's great. I have, I have like my native Docker and Podman shit. It just works. How many uh, display ports I uh, got on it? It's got zero display ports, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> That's a damn shame. It is. Tune into the uh, pre pre super shows and if you want some uh, the, the hot deets on that. Yeah, it was, it, it was it was quite an adventure. Turns out I was wrong though. I was doing the research for that in Discord. Uh, the version that they were selling at the store doesn't have four gigs soldered on board. It has eight gigs. So mm. I got some bonus memory. Very mm. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, but also fuck you, Lenovo, for like soldering half your ram on the board so you have to buy like the more expensive version because like oh man lenovo marks up like crazy on ram and solid state drives mm -hmm. you are 99 percent of the time you're better off just buying the minimum ram system with like a platter drive because you can just get an ssd and an extra dim for cheap would it been like make more sense just to buy another steam deck and hook it up I mean, I could, but then like, if 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 I'm double decking it, um, I guess. Yeah. 
the, 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 the closest prop I have here. If I'm, <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if I'm double decking it, yeah. it, it's, it's a big handful. I don't think, I don't think I'm, my hands are like, no, enough to we'll accomplish. get like a hinge and you can screw into them so you can open it up. It'd be like a clam deck. <laughs> oh, yes, I mean, the, the, the switch deck laptop, <laughs> dude, I like, actually, have I would totally seen a set clam deck. It's massive. I, I, I want like the, the, the USB display for this so I can like set up the, like the, uh, Nintendo DS on here. You open it up, just flops out everywhere. Yeah, just flop, <laughs> flop, flop it around. That's I, I love doing it, man. Mister Floppy, that's what they called me. Clam decks. Uh, Pedro, you've taken apart a gun. That's all I know. I did. Uh, it was uh, this uh, elite. Uh, what's it called? Disruptor uh, from Nerf. Uh, it, it had a, a bit of an issue with the drum that the, whenever you took a shot, the drum would spin at the same time that the dart would come out, so the dart would get stuck, and then the drum wouldn't spin because the dart was like halfway out. No, I do think so, the obvious question on behalf of everyone listening is like, why is this thing under such heavy use that it's starting to wear out? I like Nerf gun. <laughs> now, here, 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 and here's my question. Now and then picks it up and shoots it at me out of the blue. So, <laughs> did you did you do the mod where you remove the netting from inside so that you maximize the pressure going to the dart, or does it still have like the weak dart pressure? Uh, it still has the. I, I didn't touch the actual uh, bit that compresses the I, air. I, 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 I may, like I may have done a little bit of yeah. research into Nerf gun modding in my youth. <laughs> And my, so I, uh, I, I know some stuff. Stay out of Jordan's house. Jordan's got the fucking Nerf guns that'll drop a motherfucker at 10 paces. I got one that requires multiple <laughs> D-cell batteries. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that one is manually activated. Uh, but no, all, all, the only thing I touched was 23 screws, by the way, on that one, um, to get to the rubber band that spins the drum when you pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> But it's fixed, I think. How many rubber bands do we have to apply to the horse, do you think, to get it, once again, in an upright position? I, I think at that point you have more rubber band than horse. It's the Steam Let's Let's get elastic and into it. Uh, so this is from chipsandcheese.com. And now I'm hungry, but uh, there's a <laughs> breakdown of the uh, of the Van Gogh Van Gogh. I heard them pronounce it as Van Gogh in Doctor Who, and I was very confused. But uh, yeah, they uh, breaking down the uh, Steam Deck CPU, doing a bit of comparison, trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. Uh, there are a couple conclusions that Chips and Cheese run uh, comes to. Uh, number one, LPDDR5 sucks just in general for both CPU and GPU. That's the thing that's holding a lot of the uh, Steam Deck performance back. Also, they do make some sacrifices in the CPU department to maximize GPU performance uh, in comparison to a similar laptop park part. Makes sense. Most games these days are GPU bound. You can afford to have like weaker CPU to maximize battery life, improve performance. The It, 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 it makes sense. But um, this, this is just a really cool uh, read through. The guy... I mean, it, it sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I don't know. As, as a as a enthusiast slash layperson, it all sounds legit. I, I could be yeah. wrong. And, you know, the less power you have in an APU going to the CPU side means, you know, less heat. So the GPU can scale up a bit higher and just the heat is then compensated by the I, GPU I, side, which gives you better I, performance. I think that 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 speaks to something though about like there there was a lot of talk of like oh you know you can like pull the board out of the Steam Deck and use it as like a little workstation server or like a little like a little set top or whatever so that that would be something to keep in mind is that you're not going to get the same level of CPU performance as you would from a laptop in that case but you know I guess you're you're disassembling your Steam Deck you're not doing it for performance reasons and it's right? supposed to be you know power efficient because portable <laughs> yeah I mean you know no. The L3 finding on Linux is likely caused by the C3 entry cache flush, which goes away when Valve releases kernel. Yeah, Flagman actually tweeted about that. It was yeah. very good. <laughs> but I also want to say, man, chips and cheese, y'all got a serious case of the red manitis over there. This is like Windows 11 this, Windows this, and under Windows this. I'm like, it's a Steam Deck, son. Do you not know how to run a benchmark outside of Windows? Maybe not the usual suite that he probably used to run. <laughs> How I mean, weird is that? So, yeah, this is like, can you imagine though? Like, can, can, can you imagine? Like, what, what do you, do you have to install Windows to like get benchmark? You, you don't know. Like if I've, if I was on a Mac, 
would would you be like doing your benchmarks through like boot camp <laughs> or just installing been, windows by the, forcing I mean, the efi to I recognize mean, windows as a boot yeah th- 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 <laughs> this person probably would or rosetta 2 or whatever they yeah have. no uh, all the tech youtubers when the steam deck first came out gamers nexus uh-huh. linus uh, yeah they all installed windows to run their benchmarks this is one of the, one of the nanoscopic reasons I want that Arc 770, man. Just to get some actual fuck mothering benchmarks on the goddamn thing, man. Because um, <laughs> of shit like that, uh, that drives me up the wall. I, maybe it shouldn't. Maybe it shouldn't. And it's not yeah. just like, it's just anytime you see hardware, but we've had to learn to extrapolate, right? Yeah. Well, you, look, look, like, they'll, they'll usually be the one Vulcan game that they test. And it's like, that's the closest thing you're probably going to get to, like, actual performance numbers on Linux. Plus minus booger booger. Right, right. Booger, booger, you booger, like right? doing like, like plus minus 10% like that one game we would have now. And you're like, all right. So you factor in 10. Like, all right. I mean, listen, <laughs> I, I guess it's better than nothing. Um, not the only yeah. Steam Deck news we have this week. It isn't. Uh, this one is, um, well, uh, Speaking you know, of the cheaters. plugins. The, the uh, cheaters, uh, also a legitimate use case, but uh, there's a plugin system um, <laughs> called, uh, what do they call it? Decky Loader. And there's a specific plugin called Steam Back, which uh, what it does is it allows you to create Backshot. backups <laughs> or snapshots of um, the cloud saves. When you close a game, it starts to do the upload for the cloud, and this little plugin will intercept it, create a copy of it, and then you can have it's, uh, uh, t- t- ten, 10 total ten. saves. Yeah. yeah. Per game and why uh, is it only 10 you could go back for each sna- number. Uh, snapshot I, I i guess like 10 is like a reasonable compromise it's like the loneliest I, number <laughs> well, the, well that, that's that's 10 can be as bad as one if we're talking about binary uh yes. I, 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 it, I don't know 10 10 seems small but it's like how much like save fucking fuckery are you doing uh in in, in total so like it i, I don't know uh if uh, if you want this to work at all, the game uh, in question does need to support cloud saves. One thing I found out is that like you actually the the publishers actually need to explicitly enable cloud saves for the deck mm-hmm. because uh, Pillars of Eternity too. I can get my cloud save on any like regular PC or on this laptop, but if I want to play it on my Steam Deck, it's like you want to start a new game. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm 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 20 hours into this RPG. I don't want to start over. Please. How many times does that like really wind you up when um, you notice that there is no cloud save, especially or the like cross platform cloud save? Oof. Like, I, yeah, like, you only get cloud saves on Linux machines. And if you were playing it in Proton, you don't get the yeah. hit of cloud. I, 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 I've been lucky at least one time where I have copied the saves from the Linux folder to like a wine folder and like miraculously it works. And I'm like, oh man, th- th- <laughs> thank, thank, thank fucking crispy Christ, man. Like, I've never been like hit up that hard, but I've I've definitely had a couple of those situations where I'm like, why not? Why why are you not making this work? This is what what are the technical challenges other than you just can't be fucked? I mean, is there a tick box for can't be fucked? Is, is yeah, that what pretty, pretty much yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's the the tick box that is <laughs> can you be fucked and no one ticks it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, this uh, Steam Hack is a very good tool. And it, it it takes save game backups to their full exploitative extreme because you will use this for cheating. <laughs> uh, can give you an example of the Souls games, for example. Iron, uh, Iron Man mode. Yeah, uh, you can go into multiplayer, gift uh, all of your items to a person. Say a friend of yours comes into your world. You drop all your items, they pick them up. You uh, leave the game, restore the previous snapshot, and you still have all your items. And so does your um, friend. Yes, you can dupe the shit out of everything. <laughs> can I uh, use this with RetroArch to save my NES game states? Uh, I don't think the, that RetroArch Retro on Steam has... supports cloud save, so no. <laughs> I, I, do, I, do, I do know that RetroArch already like, supports that, though, in terms of like... I know, but it yep. would be a lot dumber if I could get it to work with this. True. I, yeah, uh, the, the, no. just yeah, no. Uh, Retro Arch devs, how about some cloud saves for your? Uh, oh man, save I'm, states. I'm, <laughs> man, I'm just thinking of like you. You accidentally like save state like just as you're falling into a pit in Mario, and like mm-hmm. that's the thing that gets backed up. So you restore, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, fuck. We've all been there, man. Like that really bad save state, or not even save yeah, state, just like just save, save area, yeah. wherever you've saved. <laughs> and you're like, 
I'm so fucked, right? And I have two you, bullets left, and there's a boss fight. <laughs> and you're not, gonna, dude. I'm in one of those places with uh, Black Mesa. Mm. Um, like I know, I know exactly. It's been like nine months, eight months since I played Black Mesa because I said I was going to finish that on uh, stream. I know ex- to right now exactly where, I'm at, and it's such a fuck box that I want to deal with. So, Proton GE750 is out. Seven dash five zero. Bunch of updates. Nothing earth shattering here. Just more of a maintenance release. They even get some stuff with the Open VR updates getting upstreamed to that, along with VKD3D wine staging and uh, the bleeding edge. Did you think any are crazy? I mean, I saw something with the Metal Slug, but... Yeah, yeah. The Metal Slug was the new Proton fix that was introduced because the current versions of Wyatt, if you try to launch Metal Slug, the first one, it just shows a black window. So there's a Proton fix that works around that so you don't have to do anything. But the two that got removed, uh, Persona 4 and Battle Fantasia FPS, uh, the FPS log for Battle Fantasia, those are no longer necessary because they actually work out of the box now. So... Mm. It's very good. <laughs> I, I think the moral of the story is that Strider and Alex have failed to kidnap Gloria Segral, and so the updates will keep coming, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> this was pushed out before scales. <laughs> There's ah, that. yeah. Like so, days ago, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if, there are, if there isn't a release this week, send help. There we go. A couple of new games this week, and uh, I know what Jesus said Doom is, but I, I know what Stalker is only because uh, Pedro kind of brought up Stalker once or twice. Mm. And I've streamed it back in the day uh it's um uh, you know eastern european nuclear apocalypse type of situation uh, around the uh, chernobyl explosion zone but uh, this one is apocalyptic vibes which follows very much in the same vein very much indeed with the big difference instead of using the um can't remember what the engine is called for stalker but uh, it uses gz doom and i it's, very uh, much approve X- that isn't it because like the o- yes, open X-ray, X-ray yes. is the uh, <laughs> is the open source version. Mm. Yep. Uh, and yeah, no, it is a big thank you to the devs. It only took a solid fourteen emails back and forth before the Linux version was up and truly yeah. functional. Oh, I like the little note at the end. It's like also we published the Linux version, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, also. no, it had some issues when it was first introduced. It was the uh, app ID VDF file was still pointing at the Windows EXE, so that didn't launch. Uh, and it was missing a couple of libs, uh, like older uh, library versions for the, that are required for that particular uh, GZ Doom build that they're using. So it's like, you didn't include these libs too? I was like, oh, okay, well, I, we'll, we'll get that. So yeah, there'll be a proper review coming. Don't you worry. This is not a review. This is just, you know, first mention and a big thank you for sending us keys. That too is very much appreciated. But we can just download a demo and play with it though, right? Yes. 20 bucks. Ooh. Yeah, for, for, for GZ Doom, this, this is a bit of an ask. Like, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of effort was put into this and whatnot, but like, it's a, it's a little pricey. Also, apparently it contains excessive af- uh, caffeine consumption, just like yes. Zombie Admin. <laughs> That's one through, of the like, health um, items you can use is uh, just packs of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, no, caffeine no, gets not, shit not, done. Not, but it's just like dry, it's dry instant coffee. You don't even drink it. You're just <laughs> like... <laughs> I was reading through their forums and uh, uh, apparently there's been some um, rewrites and reworks of the English language mm-hmm. version of the game because uh, one, one of the guys uh, described talking to the NPC characters as talking to a nonsensical drunk. <laughs> yeah, no, it, they mentioned it in the uh, in the update. It's like, yeah, no, we fixed the uh, English localization. Very good. So, very some good. some Simon's Quest shit of just like completely wrong and contradictory information. <laughs> just readable. Yeah, yeah. it's like, hello, pillow, uh, float desk, purple chair, green. Yes. Ah, I see. I need to get you to a hospital. Got it. Correct. Shut up, Castlevania 2 on the NES. Um, game updates. We've talked about this a couple times. I, I'm always uh, excited about this because I want to get into this. And I'm talking about Fly Dangerous. Early access. Major update to it. It's been a minute. Oh, that has. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. 25 new tracks to immediately crash in, which I... Mm-hmm. Fair report. I didn't immediately crash. I actually got a couple of medals this time. Nice. To which I'll say, um, going through some of these uh, tracks, you need to spend just a little extra time, and by that I mean any at all, to explain how the boost mechanic works in this game, which is your propulsion drive. Because it, it, it does a wind-up and a pitch. You're like... Boom, it, boom, 
it's like that. Not not instantaneous. No, man. And like I under I understand kind of how it works like that, but I, I need I, you need to help me out more with that. You know, it's like because I understand because it's got letterboards on it. You look at that and you're like, I can't get that time. I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, the, if you watch the video version, we saw that they have some head tracking support. They added that. Also, um, they added support for motion sensors. So if you got one of those like fancy chairs mm-hmm. that can like move along, uh, Fly Dangerous will support this as well. Also, hashtag Drift Cam. Uh, it will it will attempt to give you a camera that will cause you to not crash uh, uh, when, when 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 you drift. You see, is this like one of my big questions? It's like, do I also like because you know, I was playing this with a controller, right? Mm-hmm. That's how I play my racing games. And like, do I need, you know, the turbo oculator thrust booster 9,000 in order to achieve these times? Or has there been some, I, you know? I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Cause like, um, this, this is supposed to be like basically recreating the, the, the race, the user created racing game from, yeah. Home. Like the arcadey racy stuff. And yeah. Like, so, so I, I, I know that like, th- there are some like dedicated elite players with like some crazy setups that have like the head tracking in the motion chair. So I guess maybe they have this there so that they have feature parity with Elite, which would make sense. I'm not sure mm-hmm. how necessary it actually is. I'm honestly, I would, pr- I would almost imagine it's probably a downside because it's, because <laughs> um, like you know these these are these games are like made for controllers, right? Like so. Well, the reason I bring this up is I remember watching an interview with um, Codemasters when they were talking about like Dirt Rally and stuff like that. They're like, yeah, we have two completely different code paths for people who are using wheels versus controllers like it has to control differently and like people get much more of a break using a controller versus racing mm-hmm. with a steering wheel and like do they make you know do they take that into account on this I, I, you know not. what <laughs> if you are the if you are the developer of fly dangerous we would love to have you on the show we got yeah, lots of yeah. questions for you so <laughs> Tell us how it's done. Um, so yeah, it's Roba. fun. Go download it. Go play with it. And no, MOBA. Yes, <laughs> Robot MOBA. No, no, uh, the Robot MOBA that uh, has been on Linux for ten years, almost as long as this podcast. Uh, it's uh, yeah, no, it's Robocraft. I have almost two hundred hours into it. Also did a stream of it uh, with uh, Mister Alert and Mir and someone else that joined us that day. Um, it's, it's a fun game, but it is very simple, uh, in which probably why it's so dumb fun. Uh, but the actual meat and potatoes of it is the robots you can build. And I spent a lot of time actually building the robots rather than, um, actually fighting with them. (laughs) But it is... Once you once you sort of get to grips on what you need to do to at least be competitive, you can be as creative as you want because it is effectively like building Legos and you just make your own robots. It's they they're working on Robocraft two that's coming, but uh, the first one ten years old, very good. <laughs> so Pedro, let's just say I was like reading the announcement. Is there anything like you get for it being ten years old? Maybe you get some uh, the uh, you get some of. Um, Let's see, you get a couple of days of premium, uh, and you get the, you just type in Robocraft 10, and it'll give you the, you can only use it once for account, obviously. But yeah, you get the retro cubes, uh, which are like the original cubes that the game came with, that they since updated the, um, the way that the cubes look. And you get, uh, let's see. You get 500 CCs for the cash shop. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's the one. And 10 days of premium. There you go. <laughs> All right. So there are some advantages. It's not just a big party. Be like, whoa, we're 10. All right, next. It, yeah. that, that, that is the celebration. Although, it's, uh, ooh, we're 10 when years I looked at, shit. Yeah. When I it's looked not- at the um, <laughs> Steam charts, there's like 300 people playing it. So, mm. well. It, it, uh, it seems to have dropped significantly. <laughs> well, uh, so, someone else is having a less fun birthday party, I guess. R.I.P. Murderbush. Yeah, R.I.P. Murderbush. You remember that, that live stream I did with Sandy, where I was stuck in that bush for about 20 minutes and guards kept coming by. And they're like, doop 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 stab. Man, this, this bush smells a little corpsey. We're talking about Aragami. It's a sneak em up game. You infiltrate, you assassinate. Uh, they made two of them. Uh, Aragami 2 never got released under Linux. Aragami 1 uh, did. Uh, but yeah, after nine years of development, uh, Aragami in, is no more. Um, the, uh, the, actual, the actual company is no more. They're no longer, uh, they're ceasing development on 
all current and new projects. R.I.P. Lince Works. Um, yeah, they're they're uh, they're very vague about what has actually happened, but they're saying mm-hmm. that I, my my theory is like whatever money they had is gone. They couldn't find a new source. No one was willing uh, to like publish or fund their stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, I, I, I'm reading through that, and it's like it breaks our heart to note all the work that we've done in the past year will ultimately not come to a completion. And uh, yeah, like it. How do I say this? I, you know, all right. They, they've been in business for like nine years, starting, you know, the original mm-hmm. one of this, uh, you know, Stealth Ninja Game, great, in 2016, and uh, the Nightfall DLC they did after that, and 2021 they did um, Origami too. But they, like running out of time for like this mystery project that they can't talk about, like that's cryptic as fuck, son. Like, <laughs> well, th- there, there, there have been like a lot of things. Like, uh, it was, it was happening over at Warner. I don't know if it's the specific situation where like finished or like near finished things were just getting like shit canned. Uh, Mm -hmm. so like, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is a situation like this with whoever, whoever Linsworks was working with. It was like, but it wouldn't, I don't think they would have dissolved the company. They would have been paid for their work. Right. But like, but maybe, maybe like the company was dependent on that, like income for like operational costs. And if that's the case, then they, if they weren't able to secure additional funding, then Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like, and again, this is all speculation. None of us actually know what's happening. Again, Linsworks people, if you would want to come on the show, yes. we're, we always want people to talk to because... Uh, they do say that they will assure you that uh, the game will remain available across all platforms and storefronts and the online co-op will be accessible until it's fucking not because... Until, until someone reverse engineers it. Open, our, or open origami. Well, I mean... Yeah, yeah. So speaking of reverse engineering, how about, uh, you know, weird suggestion? Open source what you can. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll put, I'll <laughs> that way it doesn't go to waste. Right? Let nah, the community nah. do things with it. <laughs> no, I mean, no, sunk cost, baby, sunk um, cost. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not really seeing this is the whole thing. Like, I, I think a lot of the stuff would get open sourced if you would sit some people down and explain. Like, you're not relinquishing the origami um, IP. I, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, you, you don't even need to give up the, the technology. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it, but we're gonna replace everything with bananas anyway. <laughs> yeah, B- bananas, banana gummies, um, <laughs> spoons, spoonagami. <laughs> All, right. All right, I guess that does it for us. Coming up next, we talk about if Stadia ever existed to begin with. Do 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 do. Was it ever real? I guess we're gonna find out. It's the news. Yes, it. Uh, we're, we're we're going to get into the whole stadia thing don't you worry of course we're going to get into that uh but uh before Google we got do, out of it yeah <laughs> but it was technically running on linux so we need to address it but before we get to that jordan's going to tell you how you can get inside us yeah well get get get, get inside our discord <laughs> anyways yeah, oh my love my darling <laughs> I'm gonna, for your patreon.com slash linux gamecast <laughs> Yeah, sign up, uh, and Patrick Swayze will appear behind you, and it will turn out to actually be Whoopi Goldberg, but you'll get a lovely little kiss from them. Uh, you can only get, though, if you sign up uh, $1 a month, or a, $1 a week, I should say, is all you need to get into our Discord channel. You can also get in by subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Uh Joining our Patreon, when the, the account linking bot works for once... Uh, you can get access to the Let's go ahead and throw that up, man. If you're listening right now, do yourself a fucking favor. Uh, Patreon has updated and enhanced something with Discord. They didn't say exactly what. It's something about the way the roles are managed. Uh, they mm. sent out an email to which I was like, okay. A couple of people had to uh, just reauthorize. Just boop it. Yep. And yeah, go to your Patreon thing. I haven't run into it personally, but two people have, so I wanted to yeah. give that a mention. It's, it's also like the, the mystery Discord bot. Like, when it breaks, it's like, what can we do about it? I wait. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, get into our Discord. Uh, you can listen to the pre-pre super shows, and we do that an hour before we start this nonsense. Get in at seven thirty. Listen to us talk about. Uh, God, I don't even remember what we were talking about. It kind of ran the gamut. Uh, I, I I discussed DisplayPort. Pedro, you talked about something. We talked about oh Steam Deck areolas, like w- replacing mm-hmm. them with the with the IBM like clip mouse <laughs> surface the ThinkPad thing. version of the, the deck. Think- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Think Deck. The, the the stink pad. That's what it was. The stink, <laughs> the, the stink pad. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Leno steam. Yeah, it it, 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 it vomits blood and Lenovo, plays your video games. There you go. <laughs> Lenovo. Lenovo. Oh. 
Yeah. Doesn't that just Volvo? Volvo. 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 <laughs> yeah, you just, just get just get a nice station wagon, a nice Volvo sedan. Uh, yeah. Um, fucking dis- Discord, man. If you if you if you like this nonsense. Like doing the commercial and the guys running out of the building, just covered in the red nipple thing. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> Volvo, buy our cars. Yeah. So if, if, if you like, if you like this hot nonsense, this like brief five second clip of that, we do a lot of that, more of that stuff in, uh, in discord, get in there. We got a store as well. Store at linuxgamecast.com. Buy some merch, buy some tote bags, hoodies, coffee bam, cup stickers. Bam. We, bam. Oh, oh man. That. So, so many wish zones. We got them. You can buy us stuff. Send us some letters. We'll read them on the air. If you send Ven some stuff, you get your name and lights behind his head. So shiny. It's so blinky. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. It might. I don't know. Come join us with all the fun stuff that we do. Um, bonus sodas. Uh, Tuesdays, we do Track Mania. Retro night. Track Mania squared. 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's going to be on the schedule. Come say hi. Come do that. You Do it. I don't care if you like racing games or not. It's a good way to hang out. Get to know everybody on the show. Jordan throws down on Thursdays with Borderlands 3 is the running game right now. You said you're about done with it. I think so. Like the all, all of the shit in the game is like indicating that we're like in the last leg of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, but but it could, it could be a pickup, drop. right? Like, yeah. That that that's that's kind of what I'm waiting for. They did they did if you if you watched the stream two weeks ago, they did a fake out ending. So I'm like, are you gonna do this like two or three more times? Is mm-hmm. are you gonna keep doing it until it becomes hilarious? It's like, oh no, this is like the nineteenth ending. Okay, this is funny again. <laughs> it never ends. All right. Uh, all right. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for letting us see what we do. I suppose uh, we need to thank Don M for the 100 bits earlier. Uh, thank you very much. And North Ranger for the 10 month resub. For the X10 thank you very much. resub. <laughs> Wasn't, what, what was it? The X10 camera? Remember those ads? Or are you no? two children too young for the X10? M- m- maybe. I need to go change my diaper. The, <laughs> it was like the X10. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking like late 90s. So, so was X10, it a Sony camera? Brand? I just remember, like, it was just an X10 camera. I'm sure if you type in, like, X10 camera ad, it was the plague of the internet. Every website, like, they bought. If once you were done punching the monkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. Or <laughs> hitting you got, the button that made fart noises. Yeah. <laughs> you, you had to deal with, like, the X10 of the cameras. Uh, it wasn't as yeah. cool as the, uh, we asked Jordan. I don't know, I'm, I'm looking this up, and I think there's there's like a new X10, and this is this is what's fucking me up because this uh, looks too modern for nineties. 90s. 90s X10. <laughs> Welcome back to Google Gamecast. <laughs> okay, here 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 we go. Yeah, I, I added nineties to it. And... Yeah, it's uh, like a, it's like a black box, like a black square camera or something. Something like that. Um... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fuji film. 90s camera oh man is that okay real? fuji right, right okay. is, are the kids really like legitimately um using like is there like the hipsters like walking around with, like they're uh fuji whatever the fuck these olympus were, uh, I, 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 I don't know but they're two <laughs> that would require me to go outside camera. Like, so I don't, I don't know Oh man, it's so vintage. Look at the uh not a resolution 5.2 megapixels. Well, I mean, yeah, they're 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 listening to cassette tapes. Uh they're they're taking photos with their DSLR. It's yeah, on, no, on, on their, it's like on their the compact old, old, on their compact uh, flashcards. Yeah. Digital cameras, they're coming into uh, a bit of a revival because they're not internet connected. As it turns ah, out. So if you want to take nudie <laughs> pictures, that's what well, by here's the way, the, thing, yeah. the um Optics on this thing, especially the telephoto, I will take this over anything built into a cam, uh, Cell mobile. Phone? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah the, 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 actual the, the, zoom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. There's always something to be said for like, this is a dedicated device that like all of the features are focused on making this thing. And thing. if you want the best of both worlds, get the, uh, go watch my Sony A5000 video because that damn thing actually runs Android and you can tell that into it because it's oh. Android and horrendously <laughs> insecure. It's awesome. <laughs> But uh, what, 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 about, what about Stadia, though? Let's... Stadia is uh, something that was promised to us. It was the future. It was something that, you know, is, is going to change the game. They had the, the, remember the announcement when we were watching the Pro- live Project stream? Project Stream, yeah, Assassin's and Creed. And all this cool shit that was going to happen. And they were showing the data centers filled with Stadias. And then they're just going to roll this out. It's Google. We're going to stick it with it. on Linux. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, there, there was a hope like oh if stadia ports get successful maybe we'll get some native ports because right? linux right yeah and you know what um, a pipe dream 
Carmack was excited about it and like oh, all the right people were like, okay, okay. Well, yeah, they were uh, companies that were like, Hey, we want to get our games on Stadia. And you know, he had Odyssey and well, Google did the Google thing with Stadia. They did. Uh, they eventually just said, nah, we're done with it. We're, we've done whatever we've decided to do, but don't worry about it. And we talked about it on the show because what we're going to do with Stadia as the service we're going to wind it down and you know what they did a good with the controllers they made the controllers so you could use them with something else however the stadia tech wasn't going to go away we're going to relabel the stadia tech or other as a white box service so people like AT&T which AT&T was the one company that took advantage of this for uh, a while Peloton also for Peloton, a while yeah. you could go to uh, AT&T's website and play the goddamn Batman like hmm. you could over streaming like you could with Odyssey it didn't cost you anything well Here's the thing. Uh, they decided in their infinite wisdom to fuck that and just torch the rest of the stack. It's gone forever. Google Stadia no longer exists. Uh, they are working on a time machine so they can go back and scrub it from history. <laughs> it is Google, man. They can remove Stadia from all Google searches. Yeah, they it's can. True. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you going to know? Google wiped it out. Right. Uh, they're going to buy it. Same as um, Microsoft. <laughs> Uh, something, uh, something not in my story. This is from a uh, Steven, um, and this is on the verge. Totilo? Of it, yeah. Like the verge of all places has got some decent stories these days. Strange. It's weird because like Virgil went through a fucking minute there. Uh, something not in my story, but may clear up some confusion. Google is not offering Stadia style game streaming to clients while it had offered that for some business deals like, uh, the Batman game to AT&T 5G users that has ended. Uh, we're not offering the streaming option because it was tied to Stadia itself. So unfortunately when we decided to move forward. Because no. fuck Stadia, business <laughs> business offering could no longer be offered as well. Yet yeah, they just torched it. They just burned it to the ground. Gone. Yeah, it it seems a little petty <laughs> of Google to throw the proverbial baby out with a bat water. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but you know, take a note from AMD's book and open source that shit. Seriously, so, <laughs> so, so, semi unrelated, but I think it like it probably has some bearings into this. I was reading a really interesting security or uh, DevOps thread by Charity Majors this week, where she was talking about how like talking to a bunch of Google engineers that like don't know what a lamp stack is because Google has a technology track that's parallel to the rest of the world because they do everything in house. So oh, canonical syndrome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but uh, I, I, I've, and I have a, I have a friend who works uh, app security at Google who says very much the same thing. Um, that like, yeah. You, a lot of the times it's like if uh, like if it needs it needs to be written in house to be authorized and run in Google systems, they're not going to let you bring in uh, external sources because they don't want to be vulnerable to supply chain attacks. So like there's there's this weird like off track of Google technology that runs parallel to the rest of the world. And, and, and I feel like maybe like the, the lack of long term support has something to do with it. I also wonder if maybe this is like the result of some internal Google power struggle where like. Someone was like really championing Stadia really hard, and then someone's like, "No, I'm gonna step on your back to get ahead." So now Stadia is axed, persona non grata. Fuck that shit, right? Like, because because that's that's what happens in tech companies, especially large tech companies, a lot it of the time. It does. And how many years did we have Stadia? Like, what two, four, two? three? Yeah, maybe two. The, yeah, the four from the announcement, but two yeah. of actual use. <laughs> so, uh, like, you would, you would. Uh, it's just a different way to think about it, though. Like when you have that kind of money, how many billions of dollars was just torched? Mm -hmm. like, but <laughs> to still maintain such a revenue load, where no one went back and like, do you think we should restructure things differently next time? Yeah, or or, or like, hey, let's like maybe because like there, there's still a market for it, like for like education stuff. Like Stadia would have been crazy powerful for remote learning. Mm -hmm. um, you like, need a fairly uh, low end machine as long as it can play video. You're good. Yeah, That's great. or like, or even even like some like limited like simulation stuff, right? Like where you yeah. could be like, yeah, the, 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 like there there were a lot of possibilities that weren't directly tied to gaming. Like Peloton was well, uh, I always go on. Uh, uh, Peloton was doing that with like exercise equipment, right? Like you, with with a little bit of creativity, you could take this and turn it into something profitable. But I guess I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you, but the problem I think it, the core problem is is like Alphabet's core business is an advertising company it's not mm. a uh, services company it's not a product company um but yeah being able to roll out like uh desktops as desktop as a service where you get like a shitload of paid apps you know rendering stuff like that access that 
Yeah, they could have done a ton of things, but you know, I think it was just some, yeah, maybe just petty bullshit. And they're like, hey, we're done with this. What I'm saying is keep a lookout on Craigslist and anyway. <laughs> for some <laughs> retired Stadia servers. Yeah. <laughs> I, Get those SSDs and run every bit of data recovery you can on there's it. There's uh, going to be some cool stuff probably showing up. In like I, I wonder if they like have one of 10,000 available. I wonder if they have like some bespoke like GPU hardware or something. I don't know. Right? Like, That's dude, what I'm like. The oddball stuff. They were stuff. running on AMD, the, uh, like some yeah. weird AMD GPU. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, right. Like I don't know. <laughs> grab one of those out of a dumpster, plug it in. Oh, it works with Mesa all of a sudden. <laughs> but, like th- th- this card is rated for like 500 players playing one game. So like yeah, <laughs> yeah. It the attack that they built for that, like the way they had to like set up reservations in order to boot your games. And like, I've read some people like talking about development for stadia mm-hmm. is the way it was structured. And like it basically every game had its own VM, mm-hmm. but you had to request access to the hardware and you got put in a queue. Mm-hmm. You had to wait for it. And I, so I, I'm curious as to what the actual hardware was sitting mm-hmm. in the back, but Hey, this is the uh, new segment. So let's talk about proton. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically, how you can run Proton on an ARM ARCH64 CPU. Uh, FEX. Uh, we'll get to Box64, don't you worry. But this one's about FEX. Version 2303 is out. And uh, they have, yeah, the, the current version, uh, they've optimized the REP STOS instruction to um, inline memset. There you go. <laughs> I can read those words. But uh, one of the things that they specifically bring up is Proton and pressure vessel startup optimizations, which when you look at the actual numbers might not look look that impressive. But, you know, in case you're running an Apple M1 with uh, Asahi Linux, uh, you can get Proton to start up in about seven seconds, which is very, very good. And if they continue with the, these improvements at this pace, we will be able to play some Proton, you know, non-open source games on uh, the Pine Books and the M1 Max very, very soon. Apple users running Mac OS are going to get so mad. <laughs> I, it, it, Someone, it, it, someone's going to probably port this to Mac OS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if 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 you follow if you follow Hector on on Twitter or Mastodon, right? Like he's talking about how like yeah, you know, Asahi supports a bunch of like features that's like hardware enabled in in the. In the uh, in the uh, what was it the the M1 and the M2 mm-hmm. Apple's not even using them like the, like the, these are unsupported features in OS X that we have like fully working under in in Linux. Uh, the the other neat thing um, they got some new they got some new hardware those uh, those ThinkPad X13s Snapdragons those look real cool I kind of want one of those. Yeah, that's pretty dope. I mean, if anybody at home wants to know what a like Linux underscore gaming used to look like before the Proton. <laughs> head over to our mac gaming where they just get completely up to date compatibility list uh you know somebody running an emulator oh, the Zemo. Zemo, yeah. <laughs> uh, retro arch for mac os crossover crossover wine yeah, yeah, yeah a mac icon has appeared oh <gasps> speculate oh. speculate oh, man. I, I remember those days yeah um yeah yep front lines and roblox roblox uh, there yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, just random games would show up. Among Us glitch, like another one, like oh, oh my god, uh, yeah. It, it, but but yeah, if, if if Linux gaming on ARM just like straight up to outright eclipses Mac gaming, that'll be so hilarious. That that is exactly like if like that. How, how do you play the uh, how do you, how do you play your games on your M1? You're like, well, you get in so much. Yeah, you, you, you got to do boot Asahi, and then you can actually <laughs> use your computer, dude. Um. That is uh, again. We say it each and every time this uh, box sixty four comes up. Just keep up this insanely cool work because we're going to have. I, I think we all want a um, like low, low power arm future. Yeah, fuck that. I want. A, I want like six hundred watt arm CPU. That... <laughs> the high power arm yeah. future. Yes. <laughs> like I, 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 I want them to get nasty with it. That's what, yeah, that's what I want. Hundred hundred and twenty eight cores has the same draw as like a quad core. Man, that'd yeah. be, that'd be dope as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, uh, speaking speaking of Box64, these guys have an update too, not to be outdone by the FEX people. Um, they have uh, some fixes out, um, including Steam uh, Big Picture Mode. It's not working uh, as well as the Heroic Launcher. Both uh, both Big Picture Modes are working in Steam. I wonder how big it, how bad of a slideshow it is. Um, but there's also, um, as Pedro uh, brought up in the show notes, uh, they support Gallium 9. I gotta wonder mm-hmm. though, like, because DXVK is working on ARM, I wonder what the actual like performance delta between like 
DXVK versus Gallium 9 is, especially for um, DirectX 9 stuff. Because like I, I I don't I don't know like there there may be there may be um, power or performance gains somewhere here or there like that if you're just using like the native hardware as opposed to going through DXVK I don't know questions to be answered um, but yeah like like Ben is saying the the progress here of just like you can run x86 games on ARM now like the mm-hmm. the fact that they even start is uh, insane to me I I, I, I remember I, I remember <laughs> hacking on this stuff in the early days. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, get it, getting an X server booted was a struggle. And now this. Oh, if you got X up and running, like, especially in, like on um, like the original Pi, you, like, you, you screamed out, hey, hey, yeah. come, come, come yeah. check us out. It's starting. And you had plenty of time. It launched, a, it launched <laughs> a browser. We can have one fucking tab open and it won't crash. I, I, it, calm down. It's not done loading the browser tab yet. Oh, damn it. <laughs> ah, fuck. We're well, yeah, out of no, memory. It, and. Box uh, 86 and Box 64, they have a lot more development behind it because they've been on longer uh, than uh, FEX, but FEX has the advantage on this one, I think, uh, because yes, having the uh, native D3D9 is very good if you're using your ARM-like um, dev board with that PCIe slot and you stuck a um, AMD <laughs> video card on it. Absolutely. That's that's actually really nice to have. So when do you think we're gonna get this? We're we're gonna get like um X eighty six sixty four uh like PCI FEX. PCI. FEX can do God both. damn, I'll finish the sentence, Pedro. I'll fight you for it, Betty. Um <laughs> We're gonna get like X eighty six sixty four uh adapter cards for PCI Express eleven or whatever it is in the time. Yeah, you you, you just like pull, it's basically just like a, a slot where you insert your X eighty six CPU because yeah, like 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 oh yeah, this, this is the one thing that yeah this, this is, well I mean that's that's uh, what uh, that's what Rosetta Two is right. Like, well, here's what I'm thinking about because I watch uh, like you know the retro Amiga shit and like people with the vampire boards that have like the uh, Motorola 500 megahertz chips that yeah. have been fused into these boards that were originally on like six megahertz. So we're going to have something like that one in our army or risky future where m- we're m- have, maybe like, accelerators with like a AMD I don't know whatever the fuck it is yeah. I mean, if you have multiple cores and multiple nodes and CPUs already, it probably wouldn't be a stretch to have a coprocessor. Well, yeah, and then that, that again, <laughs> AMD for a while ago, they they kind of dropped this. Was like really uh, for like one or two years, was really pushing the heterogeneous compute of like, yeah, no, we're gonna have an ARM mm-hmm. CPU, a Radeon, a Radeon card, and a x86 thing all on mm-hmm. one board, and we will like. We will intelligently determine like, oh, you're doing a lot of like floating point calculations. Let's stick it on the GPU. Oh, you're just kind of like maintaining or doing whatever. Run it on ARM. Oh, you need to like have burst. Run it on x86. They never Did, uh, actually. They never. IBM went. ever release a desktop ATX form factor version of the cell processor? Uh, hmm. They had the Power 8 Micro ATX motherboard that was stupidly expensive. What was a Power 8 cell? Uh, no. It's, then, um, that, that's not i said sell or, so, sell like the thing that was in the ps2 right that's what you were talking three. about three there, there there was a cell processor wasn't there i know the three had the, the that was like the famous one that had 32 megs of ram or something i don't <laughs> may, know may, it was may, in the PS2. can we speculate oh. um <laughs> i did ibm make the uh or was it motorola huh uh, that's a very good question. That is a very yeah, good question. Yeah, that, that, that I definitely don't have in my back pocket. Patrick! Uh, Patrick, where are you? It was a MIPS. Oh, mirrors at scale. No, we uh, don't have mirror. What, <laughs> I'm on, actually what CPU does dead. the PS2 have? Okay, it, it is a main CPU is a 120-bit R5900 based emotion engine. That, yeah, that, okay, so that, 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 that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, it's custom I silicon it. by Sony and Toshiba. I, yeah, so I got, I got those mixed up. So. Yeah, I, I, just, I always wondered, like, if there was ever, like, a uh, cell, like, motherboard that you could buy. I, I thought that would be kind of dope. Well, that, that, that was why, like, the U.S. military was racking up PS3s, right? Like, yeah. They, 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 they didn't, they didn't cheaper make, than like, buying them from IBM. Because they, they wanted to watch Blu-rays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Sony um, released the update that stopped people from uh, running Linux on. <laughs> And now, and now you can just easily run Linux on a PS4. You can't fucking stop it. You just can't. No. <laughs> no. Pedro's favorite controller has an update. Oh, man. Remember yes. when the uh, Steam 
Steam controller used to get firmware updates, but like it, it learned new tricks. <laughs> yeah, enabled, I think they turned on Bluetooth that one time. Yeah. And peaced out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, this one is for the Alpaca. The Alpaca has uh, the, the firmware is all open source, as is you know, as are the um, the three D print files and everything else about it. I think the only bits of proprietary stuff are built into the Pi Pico itself. So uh, yeah, the firmware. There's a new version out. Uh, they've put out a couple of uh, hot fixes since then. Apparently, they took one down. Something must have gone wrong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, uh, version, uh, point 88 is the big one. It has a huh? <laughs> Star Wars reference. Keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> 88. Yeah. Yay. Uh, no. <laughs> why, why, why you got a player hate on IG 88? <laughs> but yeah, it is, uh, they added dynamic touch, uh, threshold logic, which, uh, basically it adjusts the conductive filament, the touch sensitivity of it. To avoid accidental gyro activation when you only want to just, uh, j- you just slightly touch it when you're trying to push a button. Um, and they oh, had no. to, Preach they had to fringes. release a, uh, <laughs> um, a bit of an update because it wasn't working terribly well. But there's basic macro support. That's your yes, no, thanks, and GG. Uh, you can G-G define, no yeah. <laughs> You can define the uh, if the gyro is enabled instead of just using the capacitive uh, hexagon. You can define it to be used uh, in a button instead. You, you can set it per profile. If you're using the FPS profile, you want it on the capacitive bit. Cool. If you're using the console profile and you want it on, say, the, the uh, button. one of the back pedals, you can set that too. So, yeah, no. Sick back pedal, bro. Uh, very very uh, good job and uh, those updates just keep on coming very nice <laughs> oh man backpedal the order debate without intelligence um, <laughs> now I want actual pedals on the back stick out stick no 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 no, no, no. I, I want pedals that fit your thumb like you would on a bike and you gotta put them in there and All right. oh, you just okay. gotta like power, power twiddle <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it's great and the chain breaks at an opportune times Oh man, yeah, that, that like that, that just gives my thumbs a repetitive strain injury. <laughs> thinking about it, man, like fuck. We can make it like a three speed too. Oh man, you got, got a gear shift. Got, no, okay. you got to throw a clutch in there too, so you know you got a foot pedal. Yeah. That'd be great. A pocket, call us. We got ideas. Uh, <laughs> game scope. I didn't know where to put this, so that's going to go towards the end of the news segment. I recently ran into a situation where I needed to use. Um, well, I needed a solution to my problem. And it turns out Gamescope had the solution to my problem. And I will not admit to how long I spent making that um, thumbnail. But there it is. Make Gamescope. So I wanted to take a game. Hear me out. Maybe you've had this problem too. You know it probably work better if I just played the video in the background while I was talking through this one. Marketing. <laughs> there we go. All right. So Trackmania 2020. I wanted to play the game. And Trackmania 2020 runs using Proton. And it's got two display options. It's got 1080p window, and it's got 2160p full screen. This is a problem. I have a 3060. My 3060 can play this all day long at uh, 1080p 60, and uh, no problem. However, not so much at 2160p. It, that's where it struggles to hit 50, because the 3060 is not a 4K card. It's just not. Gamescope is here to help out with that. And it's been doing this for a long time, you know, as uh, AMD heathens like um, Pedro Mateus and open source hippies like Jordan uh, will talk about. <laughs> Actually, Jordan, you've had an AMD card longer than Pedro has, right? Yeah, 5700. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had the XT for a couple years now. Fucking hippies. Um, we're, we're getting it on a, a real GPU, and we're talking about it. You might not even know that this works on um, Gamescope's built into the deck. You might be even using Gamescope. You don't even know about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you are using Gamescope. That's the, the default uh, Wayland session runs everything in Gamescope. <laughs> so we were talking about this, and uh, you know, most people don't even know it exists or what it is. I asked a couple people before I even made the video. That's what inspired me to make it. They're like, what the fuck's Gamescope? And we're talking about people that Linux all day long, bro. And, um, you know, it works a treat with Team Green in 2023. I know Jordan told me 
couple of times last year and this year. He's like, yeah, it works pretty good. And I finally get around to trying it and getting it set up properly. And for my limited use case, you know, I needed to render something at 1080p or 1440p and upscale it to 2160p. And you can also, also use uh, AMD's FSR. Throw that in there. And it's great. Now, no, it is 1.0 or 1.1. So it's not the super, super good stuff. But I mean, it gets the job done. And you can also take games, older games or newer games that are full screen only. You want to put them in a window for streaming or something along those lines? Absolutely. It can do that. Suck at SDL1. Yeah, <laughs> it's a thing. Man. That's really good for those old games that try to take over the whole screen. Run it through Gamescope. There, done. <laughs> Got a bunch of options. I made a page over at LennySteamCast.com, and you know, Steam Tinker Launcher will take some of the sting out of this if you don't want to enter the moon glyphs because they are kind of moon glyphy with some of the options and the ways to do stuff. I tried to simplify, just give you two examples of how I typically use it. And there it is. Uh, it's available. It's not limited to Steam by any stretch of the imagination. You can run GLX Gears with this, man. I mean, it's a, it's a command. It It's available in your distribution. There's a good chance that it is just there. It's even because I say, hey, man, this game scope's available in Debian testing. It means it's probably available on everything. Yeah, you're, you, may, you may not be getting the latest and greatest version, which is why you may want to build it from source. That's usually why I do it. But well, I, um, I try to like trick people into building their first application, Jordan. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, look you, in your distros repos. Uh, just type in Gamescope. It's probably there. Yeah. <laughs> Learn to build shit from source. I'm going to teach you how to use Git. <laughs> you, what, you mean you don't right-click save from Git? Yeah, you, no, you, you, right-click save as, yeah. He sa- <laughs> yeah, he saved it as HTML. He should have saved it as HTM. No, you gotta yeah. save it as dot, you gotta save it as dot git, right? Like, that's how he you He was going out. to save as uh, dot HTML, and he just removed the dot HTML from the end. It doesn't work. No shit. Well, may- may- maybe after, after, he pu- <laughs> after he figures out how to push his code to GitHub, he might, uh, he might launch a new game on um, the game store. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah epic game store they've opened it up um no longer is it uh shitty back channel deals with timmy behind the gas station and you got to do sorted things if you want to get on the epic game store anyone can get on now um you got to sign up for an account at epicgames.com. they're doing the same steam pay a hundred dollars get on the store uh you got to go through the um you got to go through the approval process uh of, of which there are a few interesting things like if you have multiplayer on your game you must support crossplay. Which, you know, on paper sounds like good on you, Tim. In mm-hmm. reality, it's like, oh, if you don't have online, if you don't have cross-platform multiplayer, no one is actually going to buy the game on Epic because they won't be able to play <laughs> it with their friends. So, you know, g- good on you, Timmy. You did the right thing for the wrong reason. Got to support achievements in some way, shape, or form through Epic. Uh, no primitive content, meaning that, like, if for whatever reason Epic doesn't like your shit, they can reject you ad hoc. And... That's kind of it. If you want to, if you want to uh, actually sell your games on the Epic Game Store, as opposed to having Epic buy ten million copies and giving away your, the game for free, you can do it now. Mm. Something you left out, and I think this is like the big one. You get eighty-eight percent of your revenue. Yeah, this is a pretty yeah. good cut. However, it, it, what's eighty-eight uh, percent <laughs> of like nothing? Because <laughs> yeah. nobody's going to the Epic Game Store to buy shit. They show up maybe we every you know every other week they get a free game yep well and then this is going to the and i think this is like directly taking a shot at uh at uh at valve right like the the 30 the 30 percent like love love it love it or hate it that is kind of the uh the 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 standard thing so now uh so epic's like oh well we'll give you a better cut even though we're totally gonna have fewer sales so that cut is still gonna be what you make off of us is still gonna be materially less than steam but you do get to keep more of your money which is a good thing. I but I mean, there's no exclusivity, so you might as well just go and throw your stuff up there. But here's yeah. the, what are they going to do when I'm like, hey, man, I, I want to p- publish my Linux game. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> well, you got you to send, send an email to GOG and then they'll, I, they'll, I, uh, I want somebody to try to go through this. All right. If you, if you were sitting there, and it doesn't have to be Linux on or anything, but if you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to give them 100 bucks. Might as well. You know, you're just like, hey, I just want the experience. Call us up. I want. I, I want you on the show. I, I want to talk to you about like what it was like when you're like, "Hey, how do I post my Mac depots? And how do I post my um Linux depots?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, the the thing that they're clearly leaving out uh, a lot of money on the table is um in the prohibited content. Number two is pornography. Ah. <laughs> well, you, you, 
But go you look know, at Steam. Go look at how many reviews those porny visual yeah. novels well, have. Well, listen, Ten- Tencent doesn't want to put their backing behind erotic entertainment. <laughs> yeah, Tencent's got standards, bro. Yeah. <laughs> With your filthy Western values. Yeah. Hand holding. <laughs> Disgusting. Disgusting. It was. It was. Uh, I can't remember who at Valve said it, but uh, it was someone in an interview that said, "Yeah, we we had no idea." That like visual novels and you know the raunchier stuff uh, was anywhere near as popular as it is. And the moment they started to allow it on Steam, it's like, oh, oh, there's a lot of people actually. Yeah. Fap- I mean, playing yeah. over that yeah. stuff. All right. Yeah, people, people be <laughs> horny. Turns out we like that. Uh, now, every time I see something that's banned, it's like, how do I break all this in one fell swoop? And um, <laughs> so, what am I gonna need? Uh, uh, Hateful what? or discriminatory content, pornography, so, okay. illegal content. Intellectual. content okay, first of all, yeah. we don't own any of the IP, so we just uh, we we do Google search for all of the. Uh, oh assets. yeah, just so, yeah. Oh, um, oh, 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 I I got one. It's like it's like instead of Mario Party, it's Mario Key Party, where you have to like put your keys in a bowl oh, and like no, have sex I, with I, like I, various yeah. Mario characters. Ma- Mario Mario is a Jedi that looks like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> mm-hmm. And He's it's a fake he, game, no, look, so it just shows looks, like the title screen, like Superman. and then it looks crashes. like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> well the, the, that's the thing you got to do like the copyright deadlock where you got to like include as much stuff as possible mm-hmm. like who actually owns this mm-hmm. oh and it's malware so uh the moment you after it crashes next time you launch it it just deletes itself from your oh, hard no, drive no no no, no. Pedro, you Pedro, you're not the, it's got a fake game or malware so you go to launch it and it's just oh. fucking pong no it's just straight up frog fractions <laughs> game within a game within a game within a game within a game after you sign up for the NFT, yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> coin. No, no, but through 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 your through your iPhone, right? Like you got you got a. We we published oh, no, the companion app only on iOS. So got, the the their uh, developer account hasn't been reinstated yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. So so your, your shit hooks in. Your shit is only like purchasable via iOS. That mm-hmm. goes to the game on Epic. <laughs> Uh, but but like all the microtransactions are through iOS, so Apple gets the cut. And Basil, doesn't. Basil, I mean, I think Basil might. Okay, yeah, I think you're in the right vein, Basil. What we do, <laughs> since this is more cross-platform, LimeWire. Yeah, let's yeah. see if we can get LimeWire on it. Can we, can we just, <laughs> just just put LimeWire on the Epic Game Store? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you guys want to burn out your bucks and find out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well. Coming up next, we we're, we gotta be in a hurry because we're we're gonna rush away. Go blue, Fast. Welcome back to the chair position. We're in a real hurry this week because we're taking a look at Rush Away. We're gonna run it on our Linux machines that have vaguely different hardware sometimes, and give it a score from one to four chairs. One chair means that it's trash. Four chairs means that's great. Uh, like I said, we're looking at Rushway, done by Nine Studios, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about eleven bucks US. What is it? Rushway is a two point five D fast paced single pace or single fast paced single player platformer where your objective is to find no, the fastest ways multi-paced. to wear the gold. Multi pace, <laughs> multi faced motherfucker. Um, explore different paths for every level and discover the most optimal ones, avoiding or exploiting different hazards. And we got to thank Nine Studios for sending us some keys on Curator Connect. I get to go first today, so Woo-hoo. I'm going to talk more, some more, yeah. So on uh, Fedora 37, that's the one I'm on, 64-bit with the R9 3900X GTX 1080 Ti, launched out of the box, same with the stable client on the Steam Deck, um, which, you know, speaking of, hey, cloud saves, not a thing that's on every game these days, but it's something I really care about now that I'm playing more games on the deck. Uh, Ven's going to talk more about it, but those fucking menus are terrible, they, re- they really got to quit with those like confirmation prompts. Controls work out of the box, but if you're on the Steam Deck or if you're using a DualShock 4, no uh, no D-pad. It is all analog stick, uh, which for precision platformers is not great, but it does kind of work. The visuals are minimalistic. They get the point across. I do like the soundtrack, though. It's like some very good Ruan noodling. Um, I have to look up what the, the name of that uh, Chinese mandolin is. I think that's what it is. I don't know. Someone correct me. Uh, fun-wise. This is this is sweaty hands the game and I needed me some like leak gamer chalk after about ten minutes because you know precision platformers they're they're my favorite genre oh and you you, you stuck a timer on it uh, joy despite my misgivings the game is okay the controls are reasonably tight and the levels are designed well enough 
There's routes, there's stuff you can exploit, as the game description said. My one gripe, especially in the early levels, I don't know how much in the later levels there are, but there are a lot of dead ends, which to me is like kind of redundant. If you're competing for time, like don't don't like kill them, right? Like the punishment is that your 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 time is bad. So you you still need to restart anyways. Seems a little pointless. I don't know. Control-wise, it's a bit of a hybrid between like action hank and speedrunners. No sliding. Instead, you gotta like trace your analog stick along the route that you're running if you want to like stick to the wall which works sometimes but not all the time i feel maybe with like an with a d-pad it would be a little better but you know that that didn't happen in this game doesn't believe in it uh there's also like a degree of momentum management in in involved too which i thought was pretty neat especially for like a speed running game because you can't just gun it otherwise you will just like straight up overshoot or undershoot stuff that you need to then you know you, you actually need to like be present in what you're doing which you know fair um, if you are a speedrunny type and you want something to sink your teeth into, might be the game for you. For me, uh, it's not not really my cup of tea. One, two chairs. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, over here on the deck uh, and on the desktop with the um, uh, Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and the AMD RX 6700XE. Yes, I remember the numbers. <laughs> It launches out of the box. Uh, if you enable VSync, it actually syncs to your display's chosen refresh rate. Performance is also pretty good, probably because I had to play it at 1080p because it doesn't support 2560 by 1440. So you get the chance. Uh, it's like jumps from 1080p immediate, uh, immediately to 3840 by 2160. That, that's great. At least on the deck, it actually did 1280 by 800. The controllers work, though... Like Jordan already mentioned, um, on both the deck and the um, DualShock, the D-pad is misconfigured. I thought it might be the um, the usual Unity cock-up with the key assignments, but no! It seems intentional because the triggers were left and right. It's like, oh, there's some uh, weird uh, strats uh, with the um, controller configuration that hey, I'm man, not entirely... because the serial killer wants to do button layout. <laughs> Not only did they want to, they uh, succeeded. But it is, yeah, it, it's weird, but maybe it, it seems intentional. Uh, and maybe it was just me in my old age, but the um, every now and then it felt like it missed a key press. So I ran into some spikes, but I didn't mean to, or I held the button longer so that I would do the long jump, but the character would only do the short jump. So... Maybe it was just me, but it felt like it wasn't just me. So, um, yeah. the uh, There's some background music, but it's even less intrusive than elevator music, so um, it, it was there. Uh, the, the graphics, they work for what they are. And uh, as for the fun, let me put it to you like this. Did you ever find yourself wishing uh, for a single-player speedrunners in which you play as a in a quasi-fez type of 3D spinning tower? Uh, and, um, you know, com compete with yourself uh, for the lowest time to the top. That's awfully specific of you, but hey, Rush Away <laughs> is exactly what you've been waiting for. And for me, I like speedrunners purely for the uh, multiplayer aspect. You wouldn't catch me playing that game on my own in my spare time. I mean, Rush it's Away, got online letterboards. It, it does have online letterboards, uh, but yeah, that's, that's all it's got. So, um... That alone is not enough to keep me playing. I get the gist of it and uh, the timing of holding the jumps and twirling the analog stick to follow along with the, um, the, the way that the track is laid out so you can get the most speed. Uh, and yeah, it, it's neat, but I wasn't really invested. Two chairs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, over here in Debian testing land on 1920X, 3060, all that fun stuff. Everything works-ish. You know, that menu system is annoying with extra pauses, steps, and just not working with the D-pad. Like, I, there's a lot not to like about the menuing system. Also, pick a side. Start button's going to be start, or is it going to be A, or is it going to be X? Speaking of buttons, though, I can't rebind the controls. What the fuck's up with that? That's 2023. That's silly. Quit being silly. And I wouldn't even mention that. It wouldn't even be a problem if they got the controls right out of the box. Guess what? We'll be talking about that in a minute. It can't manage to hold 60 at 2160p consumer 4K on a 3060. It can't do that at 1080p. 
And much like Pedro, I don't know about 1440 peeps since it's not an option in the resolutions. <laughs> like, what the hell did you, like, did you have, were, were dice and chicken bones involved in you determining what re- resolutions you were going to support on this game? Because for a minute there, I thought, oh, maybe it doesn't support scaled resolutions on my monitor. I went and checked. Wasn't the case, Brad. <laughs> Wasn't the case. This is like weird choices, man. Weird choices. Uh, volume options. They're there. They'll close out your settings. Let's talk about fun. Because I personally felt fun was a very strange metric pinned down on this particular game. I made it all the way to the uh, first trial, was the name of the level. And um, it's the one with the laser beams that are following you up. They're going to insta kill you. And I found myself having to make an executive decision here. Because did I want to continue playing or did I want to risk damaging the analog stick of my PS4 controller and later my Xbox controllers? Because here's the thing fuck you, hard precision platformers are my thing. They are. I enjoy them. Makes me happy. And also, they're the reason D pads exist. Maybe not the reason, but a reason. And um, I was putting way too much mojo into my sticks doing those wall jumps. If you're watching the video version, you can see we get a run of a wall and you get to switch walls and sides like that. That throw from left and right, that, that's cavernous. It takes forever to get back and forth with the um, analog where it wouldn't with the D-pad. And this might, this game very well might get fun later on. But out of the gate, right there, like in that first 30 minutes, I would have refunded the game. I'm like, I can't change this. I can't, I'm not going to continue playing this because guess what? These controllers are expensive, son, and I'm putting a lot of extra strain on this thing, leaning into it. Doing Maybe that's just a control issue with me, but with the D-pad, you do it left and right, and you're talking about somebody who can fuck up um, Big Mothy Boy, Big Bonthy Girl, and Hollow Knight, Radiance, multiple levels of that. So, you know, my thumbs can still move, and uh, pretty good precision control. This. I couldn't imagine trying to play something like Precision Platformer, like Meat Boy or um, Hollow Knight, using the analog stick. That sounds like a bad idea. I mean, unless you were doing it for a funny haha video. Anyway, uh, did I like what I played? Well, you know, like the soulless, uninspired bonus levels from Sonic? You know, the original Sonic on the Mega Drive. Remember those? It's like that with Fez traversal mechanics. And uh, as far as your movement, think like Sonic 1, but a little bit slower. There. That is my non-review of a game that I would have refunded simply because I don't know whose artistic vision it was to use a fuck mothering analog stick for a platformer, but there you guys are two chairs. Am I wrong, gentlemen? Or am I completely out of line? Have I said yeah. anything that made I, you I go? Feel, I, f- I feel yeah, having having some like actual D-pad support may may have made like me have a better time with this game because you're not fighting with like the the, the whip back of the joystick and like uh, the, the just the general imprecision of and it, the right? only thing i could think about that is like are you going to try to make the argument that i need to make that crescent for the little loop to for the for, you know what i'm talking about like when you're coming up but, like, but you, you you can do like quarter circles on a d-pad right like, like bitch i've been throwing yeah. hadoukens for 30 <laughs> yeah. years without you know like i've been doing that on a d-pad for 30 years i i, I can get up your little ramp without the use of an analog stick yeah, it, and it, it's a 2D game. The, the, the D-pad, the directional pad, you know, it's of very, it very... Is, Pedro. I'm watching it welcome. on a 2D monitor. Yeah. <laughs> You're you know looking what I think at a 2D would, image. <laughs> you know what I think but would really is, improve this game? Tank controls. <laughs> Just push forward. <laughs> yeah, no, I get, I, I get it. But no, uh, the D-pad is absolutely a necessity, especially when you're talking about precision platforming. Mm-hmm. Um, the game that I most recently played that I truly enjoyed of the 2D platformer genre was Blasphemous. And yeah, playing that, it, you can absolutely play it with the um, analog stick. You don't want to because you're going to die a lot. How about this, Pedro? <laughs> I, I'm determined to shoehorn Hollow Knight and everything this year. Uh, Hollow Knight gives, like, a lot of games, though, like Ori does, too, and I've been through Ori as well. It gives you the fucking option, though, man. Like, hey, do you, if, 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 if this is, like, long traversal, yeah, grab the analog stick and just lean it in the direction. It's easier, you know? But, like, it, both of them are active, is what I'm saying. It's like, when you get down to that nitty-gritty, mm-hmm. you need that D-pad. That option's not there. This is go fuck no. yourself. <laughs> I mean, I'm it sorry. Is, and they even did that wrong. Left and right is up and down. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, that's what I, I, because sometimes the, um, with old versions of Unity, that would happen with the dual shock. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, there's a Unity cock up there. But no, no, I pressed the left uh, 
trigger and the character started going left. I pressed the right trigger and it started moving right. It's like, oh, this was deliberate, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I, 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 I fear we're <laughs> dealing with somebody's artistic vision when it comes to the movement. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's one of those things and that's probably why it's got 13 reviews. Yeah. yeah. But they're all positive. <laughs> How were the reviews uh, shaken out on that? Like, uh... um, rush away, pretty cool, positive. Spoiler, spoilers, true, real. I'm just yeah, they're all positive. That's the thing. It's like, uh, like thirteen reviews or fifteen reviews, something like that, and they're all positive. We also got to look for like friends and family. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, see- I'm not seeing a lot of like product was received for free, so that's right. that's decent. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's good. I, and I like, I, again, like may, maybe if you are a speedrunner, maybe we're just like the completely the wrong audience for this, mm-hmm. right? Like may, maybe if you're like really into speedrun games, like, oh no, this game is amazing. But like for, for your average, like lay person consumer. Nah, I, I don't yeah. Know. And like, well, if, it, if I was speed running a game, I'd want the game to be a little fast. And, you know, I'm also going to see you get 13 reviews and no discussions. <laughs> general uh, there's some demo feedback <laughs> yeah wh- where where the yeah this, this isn't the demo uh, i don't think 13 people bought the demo pedro <laughs> well 13 people played the demo <laughs> i'm just saying man. <laughs> right. i'm just saying well i'm just saying i'm just saying i, th- I, th- I think that does us away for rush away so let's rush away to the hate mail segment we got to talk about haunted EVGA cards and why oh, ghosts yes. are coming out of your GPU. I pay extra. Ghosts. Jump scare. Smoke bomb. Probably Blue. didn't get any of you, but hey, <laughs> I'll take what my... What would you uh, rather have? Would you have a jump bomb or a jump smoke? Can I have jump hair? Jump smoke. Jump smoke. <laughs> Definitely a jump smoke, yeah. Whenever I jump something to smoke... No, every but time if I you do fall, every, I'm obscured by the smoke. Every time you <laughs> jump, someone sticks a cigarette in your mouth. I was a smoker for many, many years, so yeah, Free I cigarettes? Me. I don't know. <laughs> but if you, if you do some jumping jacks, you end up like uh, the spy from that one meme is like, mental gen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there something uh, also physically impeding me from spitting them out? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> Okay, but you do now. You get stronger if you eat them. <laughs> if you're oh, fueled okay. by nicotine, <laughs> yeah, no, I, you, they don't taste any better, and you they will still make you as nauseous. But you you get like plus one. Power. <laughs> eat non chewing tobacco, and you get superpowers, right? And okay. the paper and the filters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, fiber class <laughs> superpower might be pushing it. T- it might be like power like plus. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, by the time you're, you know, done with all the side effects and the plus ones, it probably, they balance each other out. <laughs> plus, plus one strength, minus one con. That's mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you'd like to let us know uh, your D&D strats for eating cigarettes, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. There's uh, some caveats at the top that you should read if you want to share your project with us. But just pick a topic. It's usually LGC Weekly for this show. Um, LWDW for the Wednesday show. Uh, and leave us your name, your email, a subject, and uh, the message that you'd like to tell us. Be careful with the URLs. The spam nope. golems thinks they're delicious. I still need to check that. We're going on like three months. I haven't checked that thing. Anyway, so uh, a while back, you might have noticed I did a uh, thing for, uh, what was it? The EVGA. Pedro, you got the fancy one. The EVGA. Yeah. Sparkle Deluxe uh, Blinkatron RGB Reflecto Edition. Very mirrory. Very mirrory. <laughs> and I bought the, the uh, basic bitch version, which is the EVGA XR1 Lite, and uh, made a video on it because I was like, oh, this thing's kind of neat. Took it apart, and I'm like, oh, that's got a big metal weight in it <laughs> for no reason. Pretty cool. <laughs> Biko writes in. He's like, so I, I just want to let you know that... Um, after my old crappy USB capture card uh, did not work in a new setup, I was going to implement. I remembered this video and that 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 ordered mine today. Period. You influencer should be a comma there. You. Um, <laughs> that that's why we do things like that. You're like, hey, uh, this is a capture card. Let's see if it works under Linux. Why? Is what we were talking about during one of the breaks. Data points. <laughs> data points. 
Because, you know, if I go, hey, I wonder if my EVGX R1 works under Linux, Pedro will go, well, my card that's not that works under Linux. It's UVC compliant. So, yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't help you at all to know that, like, I mean, how many times have you ran into that Jordan's Vine where, where you ask the internet or somebody something like, hey, man, do you know if this works under Linux? And you're like, well, this thing that is uh, related to it works under Linux. And like, yeah, but that's not the thing that I was thinking about. Yeah. I, I mean, like, in, if in like the, the, the point scoring algorithm there, I'd give that like a quarter of a point as of like, okay, it might work, maybe. But, you know, it's always like, okay, well, let's take that with a grain of salt. Go, go find some additional sources, right? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like you said, data points. Uh, where if, if, you, if, like, enough stuff in the same family works under Linux, then, like, you can make a reasonable assumption that it would work, maybe. But, again, that is a reasonable assumption. That, that is an assumption, right? Like, you, you're looking for, hey, I, I'm running this specific har- combination of hardware and software, and I can, can here is my, my camcorder footage that shows that I plugged it in and it gets detected, right? Like, that's, that's uh, what you that- ultimately want. That's once you see that, that that's what you need, like in 2023, right? You want to see somebody's actually plug this thing in, confirm that it works, and it, it, it could be all types of different things. And why? Well, I mean, you do run into situations. How many confirmations do you need? I need at least two on something. Like, like I, I need it. I need it in preferably in video format, but definitely like in text. So it depends so, on yeah, the ver- thing. verification. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some things I'll take, yeah, no, I'll see one that says, yeah, it works, or, okay, cool. Uh, others, I will check multiple reviews and multiple blog posts and multiple forum posts and multiple bug reports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you'll still get fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. Oh, well, no, because cause they, they, the, they had the dash one revision and you have the dash zero revision, mm-hmm. which has a different value in the BIOS that makes it like completely... There's like one thing that is different and that thing alone just makes it so everything mm-hmm. else is not relevant. They, yep. um, you know, I, <laughs> and you think about stuff like that, one of the things you deal with uh, when you're playing with the audio stuff under Linux is um, class compliant hardware, mm-hmm. which, you know, we can thank Apple for that because, uh, you know, the audio industry said, hey, it's a nice iPad you got going over there. You're going to let us uh, put some drivers on it, right? So, so we can do our <laughs> custom drivers. And Apple said, get absolutely fucked. No. Um, you can make it a USB class compliant and that's all you get. So all the audio manufacturers went, shit, we want money. Yeah. Ring, um, ring one, <laughs> ring more like ring, get the fuck out of here, right? And uh, yeah, it was like, well, we got to be on the iPads and the iPhones and all that. And like Apple, Apple threw its weight around in a good way there. And that's how we ended up with all these class compliant devices, which doesn't necessarily mean class compliant though, because I bought, uh, I have a new in-box uh, thing from, man, I've probably had like six months now. That is class compliant, but it doesn't work under Linux yet. Because they've done some weird shit with USB initialization. Um, that, that, that weird controller. Um, that uh, It requires a, a little Python script from a UDEV rule to send specific launch codes to the XBAT driver on Linux to say, mm-hmm. no, 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 trust me. That is a uh, Xbox 360 controller. And there's an entire thing, uh, a file in the USB system in the kernel called Quirks, mm-hmm. which is just a collection of USB kernel quirks work, for different work hardware arounds, devices. Yeah. yeah, like and there's just hundreds upon hundreds in there, man. So we're, we're just waiting. What's yeah. up next? Up next, we got Fisk, Fisk, Fisk uh, talking about the game scope video that you put out. Oh, uh, that you they're responding <laughs> to your your build instructions. They say. By the way, there's no, actually no haunted unicorns in Arch. That's just ridiculous. We actually just make blood sacrifice on a full moon night, preferably with virgin blood. There you go, blood that you haven't stuck your dick in yet. I oh. was gonna, I was, I was gonna make, <laughs> I, I was gonna burn Fisk Fisk, but they took the time to write in, so I'm not gonna. Yeah, I was, and it was like, but like, listen, man, be careful when you're pricking your own finger. Um, um I'm, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> He said, you, 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 if you went for it, I didn't. Sound as, yeah. See, I just went with, you know, the gross one. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with preserving one's chastity, Jordan. We, I don't, we don't I, all I, live, in, live in the heathen I, land I, of Canada. I don't either, but some people get sensitive about it. Why? Because our society makes them be sensitive about it. Yeah, it's sex is still ridicule. one of those uh, weird weird points uh, yeah. of uh, contention in society. Here's the trick, people. Close your eyes. <laughs> 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 
But this is yeah, a podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just in just in general, I think I think it's a good yeah. piece of advice. Close your, <laughs> Close your eyes, eyes. <laughs> while, while while you're operating heavy machinery, while you're engaging in coitus, while you're you're like cooking anything. Like, yeah, close, just close your eyes. Taking a shot of NyQuil. I mean, whatever works for you, man. Um, <laughs> no, I did bring that up. I uh, just, I threw that in as like a little sideways joke because I was talking about like, hey, you know, GameScope's available in the um, Fedora repos. It's available in uh, Debian and Suzy. And it's like, yeah, whatever the Arch users use, it probably involves haunted unicorns. Um, <laughs> but then again, it's like telling a Arch user, it's like, why don't you try to install this without using a GUI? <laughs> just build it from source no 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 you use um pacman pacman dash syu i think is the one probably <laughs> is possibly i'm sorry so <laughs> I, I i remember back in like back in like 2009 when i when i first heard about arch i remember it's like I, I was like, why, why should I switch from like, I, I think I was on Ubuntu at the time. And it's like, look, look, at look, everything's in Pac-Man. I'm like, how do you install things via Pac-Man? And it's like some fucking weird cryptic command line thing. And I'm like, fuck that. No, yum, yum install, <laughs> apt install, right? Like, yum install data. Uh, yeah, I, I like Googled it to the best of my ability. Like I apparently pseudo Pac-Man uh, capital S game scope works. Dash yep. capital S is install. Y is the confirmation. Yeah, shut up. Just install it. Oh, okay. So yeah. It's... And you, I don't remember. No. I, I think that's to allow it to upgrade if it's possibly. Yeah, like it, it, it's 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 a little cryptic. I think they could like. <laughs> that's why you make sense. I mean, it, it's listen. We're not going to live in pretend we live in any universe where f- f- half of the right. RPM flights yeah. make sense. Can can you can you tell me what a valid tar command is just off the top of your head? With your single dash and your double dash, no, no, no double dash or no double some, dash. Sometimes even no dash. You can you can just do CV XF or whatever. XVFS. <laughs> I, I use I use I just double click on it. It does the thing. Ah, file roller. The S is important because it keeps the uh, directory structure. <laughs> I don't need usually. I, I listen. Let's be honest. Half the time, but we just need the thing in the Linux directory anyway. Then we got to dig out. That's why you have that like one folder just named x eighty six underscore six forty. Like what? What was that? Oh right, I needed the thing from the yeah. All right. Mm. Looking at you, audio plugins. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you got to deal with Slackware, no one knows how to install anything under Slackware. It's a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. It's an actual real Linux conspiracy. Everyone just pretends they do. No one's ever... use Zenwalk. They've they're, done a very good job of. Uh, Ubuntu-fying I, Slackware. <laughs> I, I think there is one actual Slackware Why would you user, want to do that, Pedro? Like, that would make it alien. worse, arguably. <laughs> it, it, it's much easier to use Zenwalk if you've never used Slackware that's, ever in that's your life. Like, uh, having somebody kicked in the nuts and handed them in a hammer and say, go for the tech, bro. <laughs> You're using Slackware at that point. You, you've gone past worrying about getting kicked in the junk. <laughs> and I just imagine like Katana's like emerge game scope or whatever the fuck the glyph command yeah, is. Yeah, emerge Gen, Gen, Gen 2. Gen 2 yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, like, like Gen, Gen 2 is easy mode now. Like they have a dependency resolver. Once mm-hmm. upon a time, that was not the case. Well, like even with like Slack packs, man, Slackware is a kitty cat these days. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, it, it's great. Any, anyone can pick up a Linux distribution now and have a reasonably good chance of getting whatever package software managers are nice. Yeah, <laughs> we get package managers and things do dependency resolution. And uh, but I also do want to drive home. Um, you know, always try to sneak that in there. You notice when I do something, if there's an option to build it from source, that's a handy dandy ass skill to have. Yeah, some, sometimes you need a newer or older version than what your distribution provides, mm-hmm. and it's good to be able to produce that yourself. Right. You, you don't want to hit a brick wall on something that you want to play with just because somebody hasn't done the work for you. Also, also one of the really nice things about Linux is that like you do have the ability, you do have that granular rollback ability, which is not a thing that really exists in Windows. When Windows you, updates their OS components, on your, the, you're screwed. On, um, yeah. Unless you're, you're really relying on those restore points in your shadow copies, shadow volumes. It, yeah. Mm, yeah. I okay. We're gonna talk about like Windows real quick. Um, like, you know the uh, stream of well, Pedro probably knows stream effects, right? Um, mm-hmm. OBS plugin. Did I, did I talk to you guys about like the guy who was who belonged in like Choosy back having the disconnect as a Windows user because the stream effects guy is like, hey, 
only for like the next stable release will I release the um, Windows binaries for this. If you want the early preview builds that I'm going to make, um, you got to become a patron. But he's like, yeah, but the source code's right here. I mean, you do it yourself. This guy went nuclear with his meltdown of like, how oh, this is bullshit. He's just money grubbing now. And it- for the early access version, well, this, this I, I absolute mean- bullshit. He doesn't care about the community. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, to to be fair, I would also be that mad if I had to build software on Windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, you're you're making me install a compiler. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. I don't know, man. Like, it, it's weird to see that disconnect, though. You know, of like, it, this, this is free. Don't you have to pay anything for it? Uh, uh, shit, even, uh, even even Windows has a package manager now. God damn. Yeah. It's living in the future. <laughs> yeah, it, it has multiple so, actually. actually. It has one yeah. for um, chocolatey. <laughs> yeah, it has one for PowerShell. Uh, it has WSL. You can use apt, or if you're Salvador, you can use DNF. And it, then it has the Windows Store, which uses its own. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, cho- chocolatey is the PowerShell one, right? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I, guess, yeah, <laughs> I don't install it that much. All right. Uh, uh, yes, as the resident <laughs> Windows administrator, I assume you know. I am. I just things. don't use Package Manager on PowerShell. <laughs> well, yes, maybe standards, you should. Jordan. Jeez. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> no, not even a little. All right. Well, on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring up the music. Cue it, you might even say, and bounce the hell out of here. Thanks for showing up. If you're watching us live, we do this 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time each and every week. Right here on twitch.tv forward slash linuxgamecast. Come in. Be one of the silent minority. You're like, I'm going to sit and watch and never say anything, which is awesome, because that's what I do when I watch live streams. Lurkers. If you want to get a hold of me, at Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com, at Vinstone on Twitter. I'm just very standard. I'm your standard issue, Jordan Svung. You can find me standardly at Twitter, at The Burning Fool, or Mastodon. We got mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at Rojo there. And I made the mistake. Hang of on. Work. Thank you, Mike. Right. Thank you, Doc. I was seeing what, the, what it was going to be for standard issue, Jordan Svung, as uh, <laughs> SIJC. Yeah. No, Which, I made the oh, mistake. Oh, oh, dude, look it's at fun it. to look, stay at the no, like, in, in the moon. In the moon font, it looks like suck. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, my, my well, username but, in college yeah. was, was was Jack Wang, so you know you can you can suck Jack Wang. It's fine. Yeah, uh, no, I th- th- this week I made the mistake of installing Windows 11 from the official ISO on one of the laptops. Uh, I felt my privacy getting sucked away with each and every click. Uh, so, but you know, I am on Twitter at unaccounted for, so my privacy is long gone. Thanks, Elon. Dick. Uh, the- <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't know. It's like... <laughs> so many valid reasons to throw motherfuckers under the bus. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Dynify no, everybody. Ha- hashtag no standards for Pedro. None whatsoever. <laughs> ah, so it's using FSR 1.0. Got it. <laughs> Goddamn right. Well, it's that's that time of the week where we read the credits as they scroll through space, colliding into S-U-C. planets unknown. We got to thank our advisors, Omega Sartheran, who are blowing up Alderaan right now. Our executive producers, Barbara Ramp, Scott Michaud, Mike T, Mike G, uh, drummer Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomaj, David, and Hakim, who have glassed some planet, and Super Destote, our Chicago Sass guy, who, I don't know, has collided with the Statue of Liberty somewhere. And to see monsters, Reno, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Ferriton, Uta, Justin, Frost, Cloud, Nubbin, Dark, Wearing System, T, Dancing, Jill, Oogie One, and Kyrolo. Plenty of death notes coming by. Kim, Smashly, Doom 2, Ooh, Turnover, Basil, Cheesy, Chad, Bacon, Alex, Romeo. Wait, Aromatic isn't Basil on their quest, technically? Mm. <laughs> Marson, Renee! <laughs> and yeah, these chairlings. Which there are a lot of. That can see many. Multiple. Jordan Orgy, Jolly M, Douglas, Rose Jonas, and Alpha Medical <laughs> Zeno, Arter. AJ, minus nine, Monica, Oil Zeno. Hope. Monica was in <laughs> chat earlier, I think. Monaco? Mo- yeah, Monaco. The entire <laughs> yes, country Monaco. of Monaco. The entire country. <laughs> that's not a very big country, really. I know. <laughs> that's, that's why they fit in our Discord. <laughs> and these fuckers. Those guys. The best. The worst. Ladies and gentlemen. 
just wherever you're at, just wish Mr. T a good one. Hopefully he's having a good, uh, great, he's covered in kittens. He's having a good old Mr. Time. It's tea time. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. Tea time. That's a Half-Life Shit, 2 now, reference. Now, right all right, now I want a Mr. T golfing game. <laughs> now I want Mr. T in Half-Life. It's golf combat. <laughs> in, 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 instead of Mr. Mr. Freeman, it's Mr. Teeman. That if I ever want. We'll see you next week. I watch the shit out of fucking tea time. With all the fools that you have to pity. Yeah. Five dudes. <laughs>